And Beckham saw Sullivan off his line. Oh! This is a private member's bar. That is absolutely phenomenal. Exclusively for the supporters of the greatest football team in the world. Cleared. Geeks with a shot. Jerry Manchester United. Beckham. Into Sheringham. And so sorry. Oh boy, where to begin with this team? I'm just going to label this podcast the vent session. Um, so if you're listening to this and it's like a half an hour or more just talking complete utter nonsense and shit, uh, I mean, if you're a Manchester United fan, I mean, it, I mean, this could be as bad as it's been in a long time. Um, <laughs> it's like, I mean... In the last two home premiership games, I mean, it's like, what are we giving up basically six goals? And it's like, and Spurs, it's not like they're, you know, Man City or anything. And you put in a performance like that. It's like, what the hell are we doing here, man? What? what <laughs> I don't even want to get up to watch the matches sometimes now. No, no. Especially when we have to get up at 7.30 in the morning to watch some of these 12.30 kickoff matches. So, yep. I... I Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties last for last week's podcast. But uh, yeah, you know, I talked during that podcast. We unfortunately didn't get a chance to upload, and I we I predicted a three 0 Spurs one. You predicted a three one, so we were pretty accurate what we were gonna what we, what we were gonna watch. I I just knew I just this is the second season um, under Ten Hag that the preseason was god awful, mm-hmm. and. I could see it this year when they played Rosenberg, and I watched that match, and Rosenberg should have won about seven 0 and that's not even an exaggeration. Um, and I knew, okay, there's there's not not all the starters there. There's a couple of players here there, but then we seen, you no, know, per performance after per performance after per performance, and then all of a sudden we get into the league and barely beat Fulham at home. Yeah, um, who had their chances? Um, then Brighton exposed them. Uh, then right after that, we know Liverpool exposed them. Yep. And then, and then we, yeah, we had the League Cup match, and you know, felt like maybe that was a turn of a turn of something. And then we drew against the Southampton match. Yeah, so, yep. And then the FC twenty match, which you know we should have won that match. And yeah, it's pretty much uh, you know the uh, the League Cup ga- match against Barnley was pretty much an outlier and. Um, you know, sitting at uh, what thirteen place, thirteenth place in the Premiership. Honestly, uh, uh, you know, especially for a, you know, especially for a, a team that um, I heard this guy, person make this point. He's like, you know, they're spend, planning on spending two billion dollars to build a new stadium. How the hell are they going to pay for this if they're not in the Champions League? I know. Yeah. No, I, 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 don't, I don't know what they're going to do at this point. Like, it's just, you know, we, the, you could sort of see that the club was, like, I mean the club, I mean the uh, good old um, Ineos group were contemplating getting rid of Ten Hag. They mm-hmm. decided to support him, saying he, had, he went through some uh, some rough patches with the, the injury crisis and all that good stuff, but now we're back mm-hmm. into seeing the same performances by the same teams. And one of the things that, like, that just, Blows my mind, and I, I we mentioned this. I mentioned this specifically in the group chat uh, with us and a couple of United fans that um, we've watched Rashford now uh, over the last probably course of what twelve to fourteen months, just give just knock yeah. performances. Yep, and he's he's never called out. Uh, but yet you have, and I'm not defending Jaden Sancho because Jaden Sancho shouldn't have came out and you no know, pretty much Do been subordinate to his manager. Yeah. But you can understand the young man's frustration because, you no, know, he's probably and that, that's probably where his frustration came from because he's watching the likes of Rashford not trying. Like the first goal, the first person I called out, you no, know, everyone said Rashford went, didn't really go into the challenge, Garnacho didn't go into the challenge, but the first person I noticed was Dallow. Like, oh, when yeah. If first I, the first yeah. Goal. Yep. If you go back and watch that play, he's just there. He's just jogging back, and honestly, like if he if he just sprint for like you know ten fifteen yards or whatever, maybe maybe he's there. Uh, it's like he just gave up, man. He or not yeah. like he did. He did give up. Oh, he did. He did. And it's also like two. There's like three things that the three major things is that like that that, that whole situation was like. I can get it if he was caught out of position, mm-hmm. but Johnson was actually right next to him when when they lost the ball. 
Johnson, mm-hmm. Johnson then decided, I'm going to make the gamble. I'm just going to sprint 40, 40 to 50 yards yeah. to get in position. And Dallow was all, like, and also, so that was one thing. And then Dallow so was like, I don't feel like giving the same effort this fellow's given. So I thought, <laughs> okay, I would expect to see that in the 93rd or 94th minute if Dallow yeah. was bombing up and down the wings. It was the yeah. fucking second yeah. or third minute. Yeah. It's the, oh, but it's the, se- it's not like, he had, would have no reason to be, you know, tired or heavy legs or anything. It's zero yeah. excuse. Uh, exactly. So you'd swear he had heavy legs. He was running all day, and like it was just like he was going up and down the wing. He was, you know, defending where Rashford wasn't defending. I can understand that, but it was the like it was the third month. Yeah. Like yeah. you should have, you should be. It's inexcusable. Be, uh, it's it's like no. I've seen fouls. I've literally personally played with fouls <laughs> who are still drunk from the night before, and they've put in a shift for ninety minutes. I've seen fouls literally go off to the, over to the side in a Sunday morning match, throw up. <laughs> in the middle of the match, and then three seconds later, demand the ball and put one in the top corner. Like, <laughs> and then we have players at United or Aaron, and, like money that's like oh, yeah. some people would would yeah. make it five lifetimes. Yeah, and they're just not want. It's their job. Like, it's literally yeah. their job to to, to to run on a pitch and to to make sure you give. And I'm tired of all these like. And Roy Keane called this out years ago, where he said, "Oh, they're going to have all these." No, this is journey uh he was talking about united players are going to have their good old pr media team go on there and say no oh, we, we were sorry we'll give a bit we'll we'll do better next time like we're gonna really i, uh, I don't i shit, don't like, want to hear that i don't want to hear that yeah. anymore i don't want to hear that to begin with and two it's like it's just it's lip service to me what's it mean nah. nothing exactly exactly you shouldn't have to there shouldn't be a next time like you're playing for manchester united one of the biggest clubs in the world uh right now they're they're just they're they're nowhere near where they used to be uh no in the under the ferguson era when we grew up i know we have other you know, a lot of older fans on us saying like we've went through this with ferguson and that kind of stuff but the big difference is with ferguson and and uh and this team now is like obviously you can look back and say like Ferguson was on the ropes. If it, it was yeah. the FA Cup that saved him his job, but to see the season after won the FA Cup, United United just never turned back. Like they just you just see the progress yeah, they made. Yeah, we're not seeing much progress here. And Ten Hag keeps coming out saying we need to follow the plan. The players need time to gel. Here's I, the thing: well, he keeps I, what saying, is the plan? What's the plan? I don't know, but I'm tired of hearing this whole players need time. You've got. Arne Slot over at Liverpool, brand new manager, coming up with brand new tactics. Yeah. No problems. He's sitting top of the league. And then you've got uh, the, the new Brighton manager coming in, came in with a, a, a new, technically a, a young manager, came in with a new uh, philosophy. Brighton, no, okay, they lost 4 2 to Chelsea. But you yeah. can see there is, you can see the way they're playing. You, you know how they're going to play. Uh, yeah, you can you, see, you can you can see uh, you know, what they're trying to do. I, when I watch him, I, I don't know what he's doing. I have a clue. No, I hear that. You can clearly see there's other teams that have managers, and like I've seen, I've, I've, I've seen a crazy stat today that said that. Um, man, you talked about him earlier. Uh, the, the old, uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. The old Arsenal manager, current. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Emery. Uh, Emery. Emery. Yeah. Emery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emery. He 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 went, he took over at um, at Villa. Villa. Yeah. Three months. Three months. Uh, three. There's a three months period between him and Ten Hag. Like whenever he Ten Hag took over United yeah. and when Emery took over at Villa, and he's got Villa in the top four in the Champions yeah. League, and being playing league. good football, yep. Yeah, yep. playing good football, having a you can clearly see the tactics and the philosophy that he's trying to implement in the, with his players. His players are all buying into it. He's got mm-hmm. players that literally are like that are just chomping at the bit to get on the team. And Ten Hag can't even get fouls to even run sixty yards in the first three minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. I, I think at, the, at this point, players also like. Here's one thing: I don't want this all on Ten Hag. Some of these players no, no, no. really need to have need to have a look oh. in the mirror and say like, "Oh, a hundred percent." Obviously, I you know it's going to sound like we're you know just shitting on Ten Hag, and I mean he does deserve a lot of the blame. But I first of all, these are professional athletes, and you know you see the effort uh, that's being put in, and it's just it's disgusting, and. um Honestly, you know, I don't. It's incredible that the fans is like, especially after that the Spurs match. You know, you still see hear the fans and you see the fans singing in the stadium. God bless them. I, I don't know how they do it. 
I honestly think the only reason they 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 are doing that is because they were fortunate enough to have a, a team that they watched in the past under Ferguson, won titles, won Champions Leagues, won the FA Cups and stuff. So they seen they know what what the, what the, what what the club ha, has been has achieved and what they are capable yeah. of. And I'm thinking their th- their mindset's like, well, maybe if if we show our loyalty and we're going to support this team, then maybe it might stir the players on. The players don't deserve the fans at all. They really nope. just don't. And one of the things that bothers me as well is you and I had a conversation in the summer thinking, okay, Rashford just got, no, he didn't get called up to the England squad. Um, hopefully this is the catalyst that really kick him on the season. If anything, he's actually regressed. He scored a couple yeah, of goals I... against Barnsley. He scored mm-hmm. a goal against Southampton. And... No, Southampton's more than likely going to get relegated this season. So they're pretty much they yeah. beat a they beat a championship team and a league team, team. and a and a team that's about to get relegated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, and good, also cool. that, good job. Yeah. So um, I I would have thought he would have like actually tried, but he's just his his work ethic isn't there. But he's not the only one. Like it's just, but it's just the tactics is all wrong. Like Ten Hag yeah. has no excuse outside of Luke Shaw being playing left back. That was it, his strongest team. Yeah, there. Yeah, uh, really. Luke Shaw is probably the only fi- injury that he can really claim. Uh, I mean, th- this is his team. They he spent six hundred million on this. Uh, this is his baby, and he. The there is no excuses for him. This is. I and I. You know, I'm full transparent. You know, I was one of those at the end of the last season that wanted to give him another go and see him with players that he actually that were his and you know you know two months into the season uh, you know i i'm getting close to the point where i think i've seen enough man you know we he's if you know if you added added it up i mean you know between last year and this year you know something 60 something 61 something games i think i read he's won 20 21 of those uh, and the one that really stood out to me is it's the 23rd, the Spurs match was the 23rd time that they conceded three goals under him. I, how do you win yeah. matches like that when you're giving up that many goals all the time? No, no. And that was the thing that he talked about, like they were going to try to improve was that yeah. last year they weren't scoring goals and they were leaking goals. So they thought, okay, let's try to bring it, let's try to fortify the, the defense. And they've went out and signed, you know, Delit, Masrawi. Yep. They went out and got Ugarte. They went, they, mm-hmm. they've got, they went out and got defensive minded players to try to help yeah. disrupt the defense. Yeah. And if anything, it's still, it's still the, the same problems it's the same. there. And it's, they've it's, been up it's six to, goals at home yeah. in just well, in the last two home f- matches. Yeah, uh, it said it was the first time in God knows how long that they've had back to back three nil defeats at home. And there was a crazy stat too, saying that uh, they were saying if you took the percentage that it was a Gary Neville stint at Valencia. Oh yeah, suppose he, suppose he Ten Hag his his stats as a manager at United are like over like the course of so many matches. I think it was like thirteen matches or something. It was like mm. last thirteen matches was like yeah, he has, a, he has a worse record than Neville did at Valencia, and Neville was renowned as oh. being one of the worst managers. Oh and, yeah, and, and uh, league of history. Yeah, and 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 to piggyback on that is if you look at some of the other managers, you know whether it was Ole Mourinho, uh, Louis Van Gaal, uh, they, <laughs> you know, Ten Hag's record is worse than some of the, than those guys, and he seems to have gotten a pass. Uh, and they had never; those guys had never made it like this far, like. It's just it's incredible to me um, that uh, we are where we at with this part, and you know, it, you know, you never, you know, I'm never gonna say that you know you want to lose the FA Cup against City because I th- think for all of us it was it was an awesome day, it was fun. N- nobody, none of us were expecting that, but now you look back at it and they say we're kind of paying for it because. Ineos clearly was ready to move on for him. They were looking for managers. There was all the rumors and this and that. And, you know, now they gave him that contract extension. And now, I, I, I you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's, and even for them, because, you know, uh, Barada and Wilcox and all these guys are now saying as of just the, the other day or whatever that they're saying he's still the guy for us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm not really. And I think there's a lot of people that have the same similar mindset to us. Um, they, oh, there's just people just scratching their heads, thinking, okay. The, the, I think at this point, the longer Ineos uh, dwell and not really pull the plug here, and I'm not saying like I'm not, I'm not one of those like just you no, know, 
manager Hawks just wants Ten Hag gone, but at the same time, like he's not. There's no like FC Twenty. Yeah, like, possibly could have won that match. The United drew them at home. Uh, they had a chance to rectify that playing against Spurs. Give one of the worst performances I've seen. I mean, I've seen a long, long time. Yeah, on uh, under uh, at Old Trafford. It's not even take away Bruno's red card. Mm-hmm. United didn't look like they were doing anything going forward. They, they no, just didn't look yeah. Like- I mean, obviously the Bruno red card didn't help. I mean, you know, just probably just threw gasoline onto the, you know, something that was already, you know, waiting to explode or whatever. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, that you know, that definitely didn't help. But regardless if Bruno did, did not get the red card, I still don't – I uh, honestly, I still don't see us winning that match. Maybe instead no. of being at 3-0, maybe it's 2-0 or, um, you know, maybe somehow well, they get I, – I don't know, man. I, yeah. Well, I, I, the one thing I have to say is you have to give credit to Anana. Anana made a couple of good saves. Like if, yeah. if, if Timo Werner had his shooting boots on, it could have been six or seven, maybe even eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you know hit the post. With Garnacho, I know Xerxes yeah. Yeah. did as usual, like not, not anticipating the cross and always seems to be mm-hmm. stretching for the ball, so he missed a chance. But there was a thing I, I read, uh, mm-hmm. not read, but it was a, a, a interview I read or watched, I would say, of, of Schools, Paul Schools. He came out and it was talking about United. And it was after after the, the Spurs match, and he said one of the things, the one of the glaring things that really that strikes out at him more than anything else is that Ten Hag was told that no, he's going to get supported in the transfer market. He went out and got these players, but schools, and I agree with them, a lot of the players he brought in, and they were saying this when United signed some of them, they were saying, okay, like if Delit's supposed to be the top defender as Bayern Munich, yeah. going to let him go. And then yeah. you hear all these reports out of Germany saying that, that Bayern didn't want to let him go. And like, okay, whatever. But he, mm-hmm. but school said, listen, like a lot of the players he signed in, they signed him for big money. They're average players. Like Anthony is, is going to be looking back. It's not a matter it might, of if. Yeah. It might go down as one of the worst, you know, yeah. contracts. Well, we- he will be the epitome. Like if you, anyone looks back, it's not a matter of if 10 had gets sacked, it's when, yeah. when 10 yeah. gets sacked, Anthony's going to be, you're going to have Anthony and Ten Hag is going to be, that's going to be how people are going to describe it, Ten Hag's it, tenure at United. Ex- exactly. hundred yeah. percent. Like big money didn't work out. And they, but yep. he's just, that's, he's just one of the, one of the many players he brought on, but schools even came out and said, listen, he's going out and he's signing average players with big money. Like, did he need to sign the lit? No, because at the end of the day, he had Harry Maguire there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was supposed to bring in Delit and Maswari to show up the defense. His whole mindset was, well, they play for me at Ajax. They know my tactics. They know my philosophy. So they're mm-hmm. not, they, I don't need to coach them up on it. They just need to be, they just need to go in there. Just show and up. Yeah. Just do, do what they would do. What they did at Ajax. They come in and like, Jesus, like they're all over the place. They just, I, yeah. it's almost again, there's no tactics. There's no, there's nothing to be implemented here. And then, no, he went out. Like the, Anthony's a perfect example. They had Ahmad, they had Pelestry, and they had Garnacho at the club. And he still went out. And granted that Garnacho and Pelestry and Ahmad were still coming through, but they sent Ahmad out on loan to Sunderland. Then they sent him out on loan to Rangers. And then, no, Garnacho got put through. He actually just, uh, no, they sold Pelestry to Olympiacos. And my mindset's like, but you went out and signed Anthony when you had those three players, and now Anthony can't even get on the subs bench. Yeah, exactly. After, you know, a year, eighteen months later from signing him, or two years yeah, later, for, or whatever it was. Yeah, two, for ninety, you know, ninety-five yeah. million or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. yeah, it was something ridiculous. So it's just you have to sort of scratch your head and think, okay, where was Ten Hag's mindset there? Um, granted, Anthony was signed before the whole Ineos group, so everyone's like, well, Ineos group wouldn't have, that wouldn't happen on Ineos group. But here's the thing: what is happening? They're still signing players that are average yeah. for big money. Like, you yeah. they look, you well, they look kinda, good. At, he, like you mentioned earlier, you mentioned about, you, we both watched him with Copa America. He looked good Copa mm-hmm. America, and I think the reason why is because he had a manager who was given, well, who was, had tactics in place that, that made him yeah, look like he yeah. was good. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that seems to be a reoccurring theme with us, particularly with foreign players that – they go and play, you know, like perfect example, Ugarte. They go play for Argentina and they look incredible, but then it does not translate to anything at Manchester United. And that, that's that been like a reoccurring theme for God knows how long yeah. now. Uh, definitely and I doesn't. wonder if that it needs, if there needs to be a, a change in philosophy on, on, foreign po- i you know i'm i don't i, I you know i don't know I, i'm not going to sit here and pretend i have the answer for that right now but you know it's just it's a it's been a reoccurring theme with this club 
Well, just I, I I understand like why he need he thought he had to go out and get you no know, delete because delete knew that the the you know, his so called philosophy and tactics. But here's my thing: mm-hmm. he had Kim, he had Kambala. Kambala was there already. I thought Kambala, mm-hmm. Kambala looked good. He's young, twenty one years of age. Yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you just give him give say okay, Varane's out, Kambala, you're on. And yeah. then you could probably still could have brought delete then and just said okay, that's just for I don't want to have no centre backs again, but. There was just, there's a lot of, there's just, no, Manu looks like a shadow of the player that we seen last year. Manu was mm-hmm. grabbing, no, Manu actually should, like, was playing well. It wouldn't surprise me now, uh, during the next international break, if Manu doesn't get called up to the England squad just because of the fact, and it, it, the only player, the only people have to be blamed is the players themselves, but also Ten Hag needs to shoulder some of that blame because he's not really yeah. setting them up to succeed. He's setting them up to fail, as we see. Like, yeah. Spurs, Spurs were coming in with question marks. Spurs are an exact, they had the same points, same lo- no, no losses, same one of ones. Like, everything was the same yeah. for, going into this match against United. People were questioning has Big Ange lost his way at Spurs. Spurs look low. They're they're great to watch because they sometimes they just kamikaze going forward, but then defensively yeah. it leaves them like leaves them a little shambles. Jeez, United United made them look like prime Barcelona. Like James yeah, well, Madison. That, well, that's the thing is like like you know you know everyone kind of knows how they play or whatever. So it's like well, what is it? Is it you know you listen to these players and they say you know there's nothing that they didn't do that we haven't you know, didn't prepare for in training and this and that. All right. So that's one thing that really bothers me then. Cause then that tells me that the player is just, they're eat. Well, it tells me two things, either they're not listening to the manager or, or two that they're just not putting a shift, which is, or it could, you know, it could be both. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So, and here's, this has been a very reoccurring theme under United since, you no, know, uh, since like, the Moyes era was always going to be a bit of a disaster because it was a mm-hmm. it was you know, succeeding. Ferguson was always going to be difficult, um, mm-hmm. and then it was an aging squad. So Moyes, uh, according to he's come out and said he tried it. He wanted to get uh, Bale, and suppose yeah. they offered like offered Spurs like something like 130 million. But Bale already mm-hmm. had his mindset on Real Madrid. Tony yeah. Cruz has recently just came out and said that he was he agreed to come to United. He agreed yeah. his contract was expiring. expiring. Mm-hmm. Um, he agreed to come to United. He was excited for it, but then they got rid of Moyes, and then Real Madrid came in and snapped him up and said, "Okay." And he's like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I'm going to go somewhere where there's a little bit more uh, structure there because, you no, know, with a new manager coming in, don't know if I yeah. can fit the philosophy. There was no guarantee who was going to come in. They obviously got Louis Van Gaal. Yeah. But, uh, then after that, like you know, you had Van Gaal was used as a scapegoat, even though he won the FA Cup. Uh, mm-hmm. He was he was told to let go. Mourinho came in. Same situation, players mm-hmm. down tools. Pogba yep. was supposed to be the cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Martial was supposed to be a bad egg. Yep. All that kind of stuff. It was the same thing. All these players were down in tools. All these players stopped showing up. But all of a sudden now, we are at a, almost a complete, outside of Rashford, like this This is almost a completely different team from the same team that, that down tools with Mourinho. The same yeah, team that down, I, the down tools under. Oh Solskjaer. yeah, yeah. I believe there's only three players um, that I have played with. You know, different managers. I, I Bruno and um, Bruno Dello and Rashford and Shaw. Yeah, with the four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah four, four. Yeah. Yeah. So, but Shaw, let's just take that little chunky shit out of the out of the equation because he's out <laughs> for another six or six or eight weeks. So I think he's just hiding at this point. I think he's just like, trying I to think, collect a paycheck. Jesus, part of me he thinks that he's having people come in like two foot them at the house every chance he gets so he doesn't have to come <laughs> back to play. Like, you know what I mean? He's, just, he's like hiring hitmen to come in, like hit him with a bat. Because <laughs> the British media did a great spin on it and said, well, oh, per shot, he, he's out for six, another six to eight weeks. He ruptured the muscles in the leg that he broke a few uh, years ago. Uh-huh. A few years ago. He broke his fucking leg nine years ago. Nine years yeah, ago on I, September, it, on September, it, I think 17th. It was nine years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. I no. I've broken my left, snapped my shin in half, and I get it. I, I, though it takes a little time to come back from. I was thankful I was younger, but at the same time, he has like some of the best, like you know, medical. Yeah, he has team. access I, I, to the best medicine in the entire yeah, world. So I mean, exactly. I mean, and, and if and and, and if it, he's not getting access to that, then that's a whole other conversation. Exactly, and like, that's the thing. If 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 they're not, if the, if the team's not getting looked after, and they're they're having like reoccurring injuries, then that that's that's a whole nother discussion. But Shaw's out for another six to eight weeks, so take him out of there. Dallow has been played out of position, but at the same time, he's been playing left back for a while, so you understand. But again, it's like this whole players down in tools. So like, who? No, Bruno is a captain. 
we've said it for yeah. a while. He's he, he, no when he's when he's on, he looks like a great captain. Yeah, but yeah. Still, when, when shit goes wrong, he sometimes downs his tools. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. Seem, he, he does what he just did against Spurs. He, yeah, he, yeah. He, he kicked out, got sent off. It just got yeah. reversed there. The FA reversed it, so they yeah. it won the appeal. So he's not getting suspended, but uh, for three matches. But I just it, it, I've never known any other club, any other top club, go through this. And people are going to probably laugh when they hear it. I mean, you're saying United's a top club. United still is a top club. Like, you can't turn – just because you say, oh, you're talking about your history of what you want. At the end of the day, like, history is what gets you to the pinnacle you're at now. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, no, no, it's not like United went out and decided to, you know, have a big billionaire, uh, people who have just copious amount of money, infinite money come in, and then start you know, writing checks and putting it in someone else's name and say, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's yeah, how we made yeah. our money. The United built – like, built like they are where they are now, over building – no success over decades of decades no, no, and decades and yeah, yeah. yeah. So United can turn around and say that because you can't turn like there, there's a reason like in, in sports why you, you you always turn around you, you talk about some of the great players you can't just turn around and say well they're in the past so forget those players you can't yeah. like they're no they're, it's they're, part of your clubs it's part of your team's yeah. history well just I'm just talking about just in sports in general like I can oh, guarantee yeah. you right now. Yeah, I can guarantee you right now that no one's going to forget like no the the Pele's, the George Best, the Dennis Laws, of the, course, no, uh, no the like Maradona's of the world, Maradona, yeah, 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 ba- back in bars, all back, um, oh, Zidane, Zid- yeah, no, back like all all the players. Even, but then you go into other the, sports, you're not Ronaldo's, gonna forget, you're not gonna forget, yeah, 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 of course. Like put it this way, Michael Jordan is renowned, world renowned, just because he's Michael Jordan. No, you can't. Of course, turn even and, if you're not I mean, a basketball fan around the world, yeah. there's people that are buying. Air Jordans and the Jumpman shirts, and yeah. yeah, there's a reason why. Yeah, and that, so you, I, I put you that in that that kind of that, that that exact same category that you can go anywhere in the world, and you might not. You could go to any country in the world that doesn't speak English. Yeah, but as soon as you say Manchester United, they'll understand what you mean. They understand exactly. who you're talking about. Ex- they might not know sports, but they're gonna know what they are gonna know what that is. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I mean by that when I say they're like, no, they're. So I'm not understanding how United can be in the position they are again. No, this is 11 years on from Ferguson retiring. Yeah, and we're we're going through what I would say that what the fourth rebuild. Yeah, fourth rebuild, and which I think speaks to a bigger point is why I think maybe me and you at the end of last year at the FA club and even, you know, uh, maybe a broader sect of the fans did not want to move on to Ten Hag just because we have had such an, a, a revolving door of managers over the last mm-hmm. years. And like you said, because we know, you know, we know what's coming and yeah, it's just going to be another rebuild because whoever's going to come in, they're going to have the same issue. Like we, you know, we just you spent 30 minutes yapping about that. You know they're gonna want to bring in their players, and it's yeah, it's an entire rebuild all over again. You're starting from the bottom. Yeah, exactly because they for, they talked about though know, the Mourinho went down and got Paul Ban, mm-hmm. Ryan Hal brought in uh, Martial, and yeah, you know, all these other yep. like, like Bay and Lindelof was brought in. Mm-hmm. Right? Like no, you, mm-hmm. we, we could go on for geez, we could yeah, talk yeah, for, yeah. No, three lifetimes about how many players United brought on over the last 10, 10 to eleven years, and every time it was like. All right, new managers on. He has to get rid of the dead, but they have to get rid of the dead, but they have to get in the right, the right personnel, mm-hmm. the right mentality. You know? And then yep. when you do sign them, everyone's like, "Oh, that's a great personality. He's got a, he, that's a great character. He's a good mm-hmm. player. He's a kind of player." And then I'll fast forward three years. Oh shit, he's awful. Has has yeah. characters yeah. awful, and you yeah. get rid of him. So if yep. we get rid of like, and I, I do think the club was going to get rid of Ten Hag, but my biggest concern, and we talked about uh, you no know, offline, um, that this is Ten Hag's team. And my biggest concern is there is that it's going to be a whole new regime again. That's have to go. Any of us are going to have to say, okay, you mm-hmm. have to start from scratch again. So, yeah. no, at Liverpool, Klopp came in nine years ago and he inherited Brendan Rodgers' team. And it took yep. him four, four to five years. Four to I five, get it. Yep. But within those years, he did get Liverpool to the final. You could see progress to a uh, Europe. Yeah, Europa you League could final, actually Champions see. League. Yeah, you could actually see progression. Like with yep. Ten Hag, it's like, one or two steps forward and then three steps back. There's like, there's 100%. no sign of pro there's no sign of progress whatsoever. 
and and that's the that's the biggest problem here. I think if I think if United, and I've said this before, I wouldn't have a problem with United if say they were to get bit three 0 this weekend, right? But then if you if you but looking back in the match, you no, know, Garnacho had the post and they, they, the goals came from just like you no, know, yeah, good they goals. looked like a team that actually was yeah. putting in an effort and could have like gone on and won a match. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, like if I didn't see Dallow stop running, or I didn't see Rashford jumping out of a tackle like he was he was mm-hmm. in the fucking Olympics during the 100, 400 meter hurdle, like I'd have no problem. But we're what we're seeing is we're seeing players just giving up, and when when it's hard for fans to see the same players that they you know that idolize. Like I can tell you right now, I have children that play that play football, and I'd have, I would not turn around and tell them, okay, you always everybody knows when they grow up, everyone says. Watch, watch, watch how the pros do it. Watch what they do. You have to replicate mm-hmm. what they do. I would never have any one of my kids sitting watching at it right now and say, "Okay, do exactly what they do," because they're going to say, "Oh, you mean walk? Yeah. I, I, can I just walk? Can yeah. I do what that load did yeah. and stop running? Just oh. yeah, just so, jog it back." Uh, so that's that, that's the thing. It's the big, the biggest frustration for me is the fact that if they do get rid of Ten Hag, we're back to square one on, of like, and you're going to see everyone going through the list of like, okay, like just like you and I did over the summer. <laughs> Keep yeah yeah. L- keep loan sell. Keep loan sell. Yeah, ex- we're going to say it, the same it, thing again. Of course, of course, of course. Uh, you know, it, unfortunately, I think me not you and I both know, and every United fan knows that that's coming. It's just a matter of when. You know, you hear the the rumors of you know because the international break is coming up within the next couple weeks. Um, that you know maybe that is potentially something when it happens. It's historically when major moves like this has happened in the past. I, I'm i not predicting that's going to happen. It, it wouldn't surprise me if it did. It wouldn't surprise me if they if he stuck around. I mean, I guess if he has some more clunkers and he's losing 2, 3, 4, 5 nil or whatever, then, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, I guess at that point, then, yeah, just rip the Band-Aid off. <laughs> yep. No, exactly. And like, I do feel bad for him. Like, I, 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 no, I, I read an article earlier with Benny McCarthy's interview, and Benny McCarthy came out and said that uh, players these days they need a, a, a manager with passion. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. I was like, because the last time I checked when I watched Real Madrid, I don't exactly see Carlo Ancelotti like, zoom passion. What I do is I see him like zoom <laughs> confidence, confidence exactly, and yeah. everybody on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. No, you don't need to have a. If anything, Anna be... Clotty's uh, drinking espresso or a cappuccino in the dugout. Yeah, Here, here's a perfect example of like the kind of man we talked about this too offline. Like Ancelotti is, I know we're going over that. An- Ancelotti on his summer vacation, you've got all these other people like you no know, clop to spot like a big villa, Marbella or, or yeah, 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 or yeah. something like that, uh-huh. and you got all these other managers going all to these exact. Do where do where Ancelotti spends his time off? <laughs> Mon Mon fucking Tana. Montana. Yeah. He's in Montana. Co- co- he's a cowboy. He's the uh, yeah. he's the John. He's the J- Italian John Dutton. D. Seriously, man, that's right. Th- I'm seriously thinking. And supposedly he. Supposedly the rumors is he's a massive fan oh. of Yellowstone. I, actually, that reminds me. When we get off of here, I have to send you a reel of uh, you know the Shabuzi song. Everybody in the bar getting tipsy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a an Italian guy who did a cover of that song in Italian, and it made me actually wonder if Anne Lachati's listening to that in fucking Montana. Well, yeah, exactly. So I know we're getting a little topic here, but like I was just yeah. saying, like I heard that Benny McCarthy came out and said players need players these days need a manager with passion. I don't see Carlo Ancelotti like pounding his chest like Klopp does, or running up and down the sidelines like Mourinho and Tucho and all them kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and screaming and shouting. I don't yeah. see that. But what happens is, he, obviously, Ancelotti, over his years of, many years of experience, has went ahead and decided, like, I'm I'm going to make sure that these players are well, just well coached in terms of, yeah. like, what I expect of them, what their mm-hmm. jobs are. And, you know, he, after Ben McCarthy came out and said that, he said about, oh, he's, that Ten Hag's one of the, one of the top coaches in terms of tactics. I lost all respect for McCarthy then because I'm yeah. thinking, okay, like, have you not been watching the same match as we are? Because I don't see many tactics. I don't see much of philosophy. Yep. The players seem lost. They genuinely, genuinely seem, yeah, seem lost. Yeah, they look confused and they have no idea what is going on. So, yeah, I don't I don't know what he's seeing from that. I don't. Maybe he's talking about his time at Ajax and – other time but at united i don't know i don't know what he's seeing that we we are are not yeah like i'm hoping that 
I'm wrong and like the United end up like you no know, maybe they turn a corner against Porto but like Jesus mm-hmm. we we've had this conversation too many times we keep, that's probably that's probably the, f- the most favorite saying right now for United is turn the corner turn the corner Yeah, like, I know, turn the corner. Yeah, yeah, I at at this point I don't I don't know where that is. I, I you know, I really do. I mean, obviously, you know, we have Porto coming up uh pretty soon and honestly, I, I don't think either one of us are most United fans expect us to get a result in that in that match. I, I no, I'm fully prepared for the forms. worst. No, but not based yeah. on current performance. No. Yeah, and here's the thing too that I, I don't know why managers don't do it more often. Like we've we've like we mentioned earlier, we've seen Rashford not give no any perform like a performance that he's yeah. capable of, and he doesn't give, seem to give any effort. Delo did the same thing. Why isn't like the younger players who? And that's the thing too. And this is I I, I thought about this earlier too. It's a bad example that they're setting for the younger players that are coming through because they're going to start. They're going to see players like the Rashfords and the Delos and you know the Casemiro's that aren't really playing well. And when they do get their chance, they might start picking up the same tendencies. They might not be given a hundred percent. And like back in the day, you would say give the youth a chance because they're going to run their balls off. Yeah, but they might not because they're seeing the people that they're idolizing. There's like exactly, they're going to think that's like, acceptable I'm, behavior. Like, do you think little Harry Mass is going to see the low? trotting back not 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 mark and johnson and johnson scoring do you think he's going to say yeah geez he's going to he's going to start the next match so should i really even be doing the same thing when i get on the chin or or where's the whole like where's the competitiveness of driving forward and actually having a Mm -hmm. little bit of pride and not only not only like pride for playing for the club that pays your massive salary but also pride in yourself like you're a professional athlete yeah exactly you know irrespective of having pride for your club and 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 you know for fans have have you know pride for yourself have pride for your family name for christ's sake you know your friends and family or your you know your siblings or whoever is watching that and they watch that i I would be i would be fucking embarrassed some of these performances and shifts that these players are putting in exactly because there's the reason your name's on the back back of the jersey is that you think about it like that's no, that's your legacy of your of your name. So, do you really want people to turn around and like? I know some people are probably going to laugh at us saying they're going down the rabbit hole, thinking that people actually give a shit about. It. But you do because there's like no, you have players that play for United that played decades ago that they still get their names chanted mm-hmm. at, at Stratford End. Like, yep. Does that not does that not inspire anybody to want to sit there and think, do oh, I'm going to really put a shift in here? And the one like, yeah. no, and that's another thing. It's another thing too where we have to sort of question Ten Hag's mindset is that the players that he let go of. And granted, some of them they weren't the most technical, and they, they, there was times where you wrote, you wrote, like you scratch your head thinking why they even on the pitch. But like, yeah, Scott McTominay, McTominay would not have given up. I, no, I yeah, yeah, no, I, I Fred, agree with you. Yeah, yeah, Fred wouldn't have given up. Like Fred no. would, have, would have kept going. And then you had you, know, you have other, other players that are sitting there. Like you've, it's just crazy how when we watch Sancho go off to Dortmund, and he's playing well, and he go out now Chelsea, and he's playing well, and you're thinking, okay, maybe United, United just as a club has just become a, a graveyard for. You no, know, for players' careers because they come there, they get a big fat salary, and they yeah, it's it's like the MLS of the of 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 England of the yeah, of uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, meaning the last ten, eleven plus years or whatever, that's kind of <laughs> depressingly, that's kind of what it, what it has turned in here. Just a place where a lot of names come and they go get a fat paycheck, and not much, not not much translating to the pitch. Yeah, and I'm not defending the Glazers whatsoever because I do think that the Ineos situation is a facade for the Glazers to sort of keep the they're they're letting someone else know it's a they're using the Ineos as a shield between yeah. themselves, a mediator between themselves and the fans. So now yeah, there's yeah. no du- there's no direct line of sight for the fans now to get it the Glazers because the Glazers now have the Ineos sitting right in front of them. Yeah, they they're say, yeah they're the ones who are you know front and center. You know exactly. Malcolm and Avram and fucking Gollum, whoever the fuck, Gollum, Glazer, whatever the fuck (laughs) their names are. They're probably just hanging out in Tampa or wherever the hell they are. Yeah, they look at they look at United and probably all their teams as uh, not as success on the field. They look at it as like a financial thing. All right, cool. You know, we qualified for the Champions League. We did this. All right. How much money are we getting? That's what they look at it. They look at it as a number thing. They don't they could give two shits if they're actually winning anything. Nah, no, nah, they definitely don't. And then what as I said, I'm not trying to defend them at all, but they you can't turn around now and say that the Glazers are the problem for the club in terms of like not supporting the the, the manager in terms of his transfers because they have like six hundred million 
and yeah i mean no, 600 million no. isn't chump change so yeah, yeah. i mean uh um, and this is a, and this is also after united had to come out and say that they they had a loss of over 100 million this past this past season so yep. you know they're they're, out, they're spending money and they're also they're selling players but they're not selling the players for the same prices that they're buying players but I don't. Know. I, that we can. Yeah. Geez, we can keep talking about this, but this we can we can sort of transition this into now. Is like so if if you were to turn around now and say, okay, after Thursday's match, you had to get beat by a portal, and they said Friday morning is a press conference, and you had to say Ten yeah. Hag has been relieved of his duties. We've, mm-hmm. we've parted by mutual consent. And yeah. he's getting this. He's getting the severance package. I've read multiple different names getting thrown into the pot. I've heard that yeah. Ruud van Nistelrooy will be the interim manager until further mm-hmm. notice and possibly yep. end of the season. Um, which concerns me about him just because of the fact that he is currently part of the coaching staff. So yeah. why isn't why isn't he turning around and saying, "Listen, like, no, this this isn't working," or "This we maybe we should do this." Like, he's also part of the equation, and therefore he's part of the problem. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's a good one. We're also hearing that possibly Inzaghi from Inter is uh, mm-hmm. is, a, is a candidate. Um, yep. they just won enter, entered this one today. I think two. They were one and two now last time I checked. The Champions yeah, League. yeah. Yep. Got them. Got them to the Champions League final. Um, two seasons. Got ago. all. Got a lot of they got a lot of outside issues too with both uh, both Inter and Milan too. I'm sure you've read about too. Yep, exactly. So you got you got, you got Zaggy, and then we got a good old your your favorite can possible candidate, the man you really <laughs> want to take the hot seat, and Gareth oh, Seith- yeah. Gareth, Gareth Southgate <laughs> um, has been touted well, because of his his relationship with Dan Ashworth. Yeah, uh, you know, I think I'll share with the uh, I think I'll share with our listeners our. Uh, my uh my planet from our uh, group chat earlier this morning this this is my <laughs> grand plan d i think you know in the chance or the very likely chance that heritage egg gets sacked in the next few weeks or whatever i think we should have fred the red bandage and then he's going to secretly save the club and then it's going to take his mask off and it's going to be old buck rogers d what do you think about that I don't know if I want that now after what I just watched. Went to no, I know. Seven, seven, seven one. one. Yeah. yeah. A seven one tanking <laughs> by Dortmund. So, yeah. No, I, 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 I'll, I'll take your idea and I'll raise you, uh, uh, raise you 50 bucks. I would do the same thing. Let Fred the Red take it. And then at the, at, no, he'll take the match against Villa. You know, it'll won 5 0. Asher will score a hat trick. Uh, Xerxes will get a will get a brace, and then at the end of it, you'll see Fred the Red take off his helmet and it'll uh, take off the head, and it'll be actually Roy Keane. Oh, Can there we, we go! Down? I like that even better. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be like a, it'd be like a, it'd be like an it'd be like an episode of it'd be like an episode of yeah. Scooby Doo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Jesus. So it'll be uh be Roy Keane and Fred yeah. the Red. Roy Keane and Fred the Red. I like it. Yep. Now, so. I, I, in all seriousness, though, um. You know, um, I would say, you know, of the names that have been floating around there, you know, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm okay with Van Nistelrooy being the caretaker, you know, you know, in the time being, you know, unless he, you know, really shows something during that time, you know, maybe that turns into a permanent thing. Um, but, you know, he would have to, he would have to really show something uh, during that time frame. Um, you know, I guess a name, you know, none of them, I, you know, I well, there's also, there's also of, Thomas Tuchel has been still once again, his name. Yeah, re-emerged. I guess, I, I guess out of all of them, that would be the one that would probably have my mo peak, my interest the most. Um, especially, you know, there was very serious mutual interest. And, uh, from what my understanding was, it came down to, him not really having a say in transfer policy and all that sort of stuff because of Ineos is if I recall correctly. So I guess that would be one, you know, the one that st- stands out to me the most. I don't know. What about you, D? Well, I'll say, like I mentioned, there was Thomas Tuchel's name's been mentioned again. Uh, Rather than the story, and Zaggy, I don't think Enter's going to part with Zaggy personally. I don't think he's even a candidate. I, and also, yeah, I, he, I don't. No, it he's, he's, it, honestly, it doesn't sound like he wants to leave because I've nah. read some quotes from him, and I honestly, I don't see why he would want to leave. No, nah, I and I think his tactics are more suited for for Italy. I think. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think that he. I don't think that his, if he was to bring something in, I don't think the current squad that he has at his disposal would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, at United, like. Yeah, yeah. The, the current team would be able to 
like you'd be really able to repli- line up like that because yeah. yeah. you know nah. three five would, i mean you'd have, wouldn't be able to replicate but, what he's doing it yeah right now. it'd be a yeah it'd be another disaster wouldn't happen um, yeah but the one play, the one manager that like, and I watched the thing where he did an analysis this past weekend, um, and he was uh, was Graham Potter as another man okay. that sort of like na- okay. the name. He's he's you know he's a younger manager. Like I get it. Like uh, no, he's he did really well at Brighton. I think mm-hmm. Chelsea the situation at Chelsea for him. I think it just he came out and he, he he's admitted his wrongs. What he did wrong. Um, no, is he a, is he a possible candidate? Yes, but. No, I I think Tuchel would be the best right now, just because he he, he comes on, he's got a philosophy. He knows, he knows mm-hmm. you know, he he actually seemed to know what he was doing. He, I know he didn't do well at Bayern, but, but yeah. he's also a very he's got he's got a strong personality. Do I think yeah. players that play for him? I don't know. Um, I don't think Zidane is. I got a lot of United fans love yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Him I mean, I've heard those. Lines. I've honestly, I feel like it's just kind of like. You know, like what we go through the whole transfer window, it's just there's just always always big names or names that are always linked to us just because we're united. I, I you know, I don't I don't even know if the interest is mutual of that or if that would even be a possibility. Yeah. Well, like you mentioned that uh, like right before we started, and I actually would like I would I don't think it'd be a bad sign, and I think he might he would bring a player to United that I that I actually wanted United to sign uh, about two seasons ago was uh, United Emery. Would, uh, oh yeah, a, yeah. He would be a good candidate. Um, yeah, you know, you know, you kind of look at what he's done. You know, I, you know, his career managerial career hasn't been all good and all bad. You know, it's it's had it's had you know definitely ups and downs for sure. But I don't think anybody can knock what he's been doing at Villa. I know I can't. No, and he, you know he's Mister Europa League. He's won it so many times uh, with multiple different clubs. But he, you no, know, he's done really well at Villa. And one of the things that I think he would he would possibly do if he was to join is actually end the the search for United to get an actual goal scorer. I think I would love little Ollie Watkins to come to United. I think Ollie. Oh Watkins yeah, play. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, think, what I is he has player. like like six something goals right now? I think doesn't he? Is that what? It- yeah, he's he, he's definitely up. But he's he started off the season slow, and uh, but he's definitely picked up on in terms of like his his production. But it's yeah. it's not just it's not. I remember watching him against uh against Arsenal um last season, mm-hmm. and no Villa, but I think Villa, Villa but you know a bit Arsenal two 0 and it was what Arsenal was really pushing for the for the for the Premier League, and his breakaway speed was on was unreal, and then. It was, it was just finishing was was another aspect that I think you know yeah. you know just don't have that killer instinct. But again, it's hard to have a killer instinct when you don't get opportunities to, to actually like get get a shot on goal. Like you know, yeah, be- yeah. Well, yeah, you know, if you know, it's one thing not getting the opportunities or the service, but um, even you know when there has been the service, it's like I, you know where's it coming from because you know it's not coming from Xerxy and Hoyland's just coming back basically from an injury or whatever so I I don't know where the goals are coming from I mean we've talked about this ad nauseum before (laughs) on previous episodes so I I honestly I'm at a loss of words on where where they're coming from man yeah, same here. It's just we. It's just down to the way the team's set up. Like we've we've went through multiple different scenarios of how the team should set up. We've seen a lot of different, you know, formations, a lot of different lineups, like different players in different positions, and it's the point where nothing really seems to really click with the team. Um, Ten Hag keeps saying these players need time, but I don't see. I don't. See I, I, don't I. I don't. I don't agree with that. I. That's a cop out to me. It's like. You know, you're a professional, you know, like a Ugarte or something. Like, how much time do you really need to acclimate, you know? No, uh, you don't. That's a, I, I, that's a, I, I, I just, I feel like that's a bullshit answer. All right, because my, I hate to say this, but like the best way to shut Ten Hag up there is that look at that Chelsea team. That Chelsea team is just, yeah. you no, know, like four, I think they said it was like 46 first team players they bought, like they just all mm-hmm. the signings. They have all these different players, all these different personalities. and. They have a manager that was just in the championship last season, got them playing good football, got them winning, got them scoring goals. Now, do they keep clean sheets? They they were for a while, <laughs> but you no, know, they beat Brighton four two. Yeah, uh, but they you know they've got Cole Palmer, who's just I think he has the best player in the Premier League yeah. right now, just firing all cylinders. Yeah, and on top of that, you've got you know a good structure. Like they they went they just like, as I said they. If you look, that's a team you couldn't tell me they're starting eleven every time, just because there's so many different players that can yeah. come out of the squad. 
but they also have a philosophy like the, the manager there the former Leicester manager has like has, he's got a he seems like he's got a good grip on things and he didn't come out and say why well, did this sign like 15 players this, this summer and they need time to gel Ten Hag has had like the majority of the team that he plays week in week out bar like two or three players mm-hmm. have been in the, were there last season and they're there the season before yeah exactly so, I mean I, I honest I, you know maybe I'll give him two and I'll give him uh uh Yoro and Shaw. That's the that's the only two I and he, and still that doesn't that's not an excuse. Nah. I don't think even think Euro if Euro is to come in there, I don't think because who who again, we talked about this before the season started. Like who does he drop for Euro? Like yeah. does he drop Martinez? Because Euro's does he play him left center back or does he play Euro yeah, right center yeah. back? So does mm-hmm. he drop the lit? So if he drops the lit, then why'd he buy the lit? No, and then he has Harry Maguire there and he's got Lindelof. You got a lot of players there that don't need, need to be at the club. And yeah. At this point, it's just we don't really know what's happening because we've watched every single match so far this season. I knew this was coming. Uh I mentioned it last season with a preseason. I I I'll 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 die in this hole when I say this that preseason literally dictates how you're going to start your season and if you don't have a good preseason i don't care if, if they turn and say ah preseason is just about getting your fitness yeah you know if the, the players don't look fit they don't yeah, seem been, to know the tactics they don't seem to understand on it what, since the start man uh, they don't seem to understand what their what their role is within the team um we've seen that against liverpool we've now seen it against spurs we've seen it against brighton uh we've seen it against c20 like no that's just four matches we've only we're not even that yeah. far into the season like, no, I, we're not. I, <laughs> it's gonna uh, be it's gonna be a really long season. <laughs> like talk sport, talk sport actually went outside Old Trafford after the Spurs match, and they asked a lot of lot of a lot of the fans. Um, yeah, like what's your opinion on it? Do you think that Ten Hag's gonna you know, should go? And of the four or three three of them that were interviewed, one was a young lad that seemed like he was smacked out of his head. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the first fellow talked. He actually talked sense, um, and he was saying that he just it's to the point now where it just seems like the players. Have just lost interest with Ten Hag. Um, he just seems just downtrodden. He doesn't seem to really be. Um, it, it just doesn't he, seem uh, to be light at the end of the I would say, uh, yeah, the light at the end of the tunnel. Or I would say, I would use the word defeated. Sometimes when you look at him on the on the touchline, and um, you know, like uh, you know, a buddy of ours in our group chat, Ben. Um, you know, he pointed out to us in the in the. Um, was it the um not the Spurs match was it the Palace match I think maybe it was the uh in the uh extra time you had basically Ten Hag just kind of sitting there you know like looking like he's moping around and Van Nistelrooy is the one who's out actually yelling at the team and push forward or whatever so I look at him and I almost see like a defeated man yeah, well, just like back to the FC twenty match, was I think it was the FC twenty match where yeah, uh, actually, was, I think was, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was bringing he was bringing on Garnacho um, mm-hmm. in the match, and Owen Hargreaves picked up on it. He said the because he was on the the, yeah. the touchline, the, the microphones picked up on what Ten Hag was mm-hmm. telling him, and United United at the time are chasing a goal. They're trying to win a match, and he's bringing Garnacho on, and he says three words to him: defend, defend, defend. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm thinking like, wait a minute! You're bringing on a youngster who's naturally an offense, an offensive-minded yeah. player, and you're yeah, telling exactly. him to defend. Yeah, and I get what he's probably trying to say to him, like make sure you know attack, but also remember your defensive, your defensive responsibilities. Ref- yeah, yeah. I, I get all that, but again, if you look at the other teams around, like just the, some of the most successful teams, like do they get players to defend? Yes, but at the same time, like. You get you see some of the leniency being given to their top players. Like I can tell you right now that Mo Salah doesn't defend, defend, defend. I'm sure Arnie Slot's <laughs> not telling him. No, does he tell him to keep his shape? Does Salah like uh, pinch back he, in and get shit? Yeah, 100%. yeah. But the way these players have been told to play is that like bomb forward, like, and then it seems like they're just clueless. Like a lot of times when Garnacho gets the ball, he's told just to run. And he's running yeah. down the wing, and then by mm-hmm. then he looks up, and there's maybe one person in the box with three players around him. So he goes, "Okay, I got to stop." And then by then, the other team gets the defense back, and the ball's been yeah. switched. They play it backwards. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, at this point, I think, I think Thursday will be the nail in the coffin. I don't think it's a matter of if United lose. I don't think United's going to get a result. Uh, I think these players have really like it's 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 just diabolical that we're going through this again as a club just like mm-hmm. another season of players just down in the tools they did it under Mourinho they did it under Solskjaer 
And yep. now they're doing it under Ten Hag, and it's like, yep, Jesus, like, how can it happen with the three different like? And everyone keeps saying, oh, oh, but there's still there's still some bad apples in that group. I'm like, okay, we'll call them out. No one yeah. ever calls it out, and everyone knows it's the Rashford to the club. Mm-hmm. He's he's a he's a common denominator there. He was yep. there in Mourinho. He was there for Ole, and he was he's yep. not under Ten Hag. Yep. Marshall's gone, so they can't they can't blame him. Pulp yep. was gone. Man. Shaw's yep. another Shaw's another one that was been around all three of them. Yeah. Um and no Bruno didn't play under Mourinho, but he definitely played under Solskjaer. But, but at the same time he, he he played his best football under Solskjaer, so I don't think he down tools per se. Uh but uh, this time he just I think some of the players are also just frustrated. I think that I well, think Bruno that's but- I, that's what I, I was gonna you know, stay at Bruno is because I, you know, out of all of them, he's the one I, you know, I, I, I I'm going to, you know, he hasn't been playing well, but at the same time, you know, mentally, it's got to be so draining on him. Just be like, you know, sometimes it seems like he's the only one who cares or puts in an effort really, um, you know, for the team. And I do wonder, cause I, you know, if I was in his shoes or whatever, and I was, and I was seeing that, and you've been going through the same crap over and over again. I could just see how that's mentally exhausting, and just would be would weigh on you and be very frustrating. And no, I'm, no. I'm not I'm not making an excuse for him, but I could. I'm just trying to put myself in his in his shoes. Oh no, and I agree with you. Like I think at this point, um, I think that tackle with with. Madison on Sunday, the red card. You know, I think mm-hmm. it was. I think he was on the game. Did he slip? Yes. Did he still kick out a little petulantly? Yes. Yeah. But I also think I think it's down to this frustration because yeah. you no know, Bruno. Bruno's supposed to be this creative, you no know, playmaker for United. He's supposed to be the, yeah. the, you know, the, and the creative not, force. It, and, yeah, and it's not translating this year. And, yeah. and no, that's it's just not probably working. a white. Probably has to tactics and you know different play. It, it, it's probably a lot of things. You know. Yeah, no, it definitely has. I've seen, I've watched the match now, and it's like you know, you get the ball wide, and it goes wide, and then every, every team knows how to set up against United. Yeah, and then it happens is it goes out wide. They either try to beat the, the man, they don't beat him, and then they cut back, they play it back, and then all of a sudden goes all the way back to the center backs, and by then yep. the other team starts to press high. You know, get yep. the ball away, and the, the yeah, the build up, yeah, the build up's already go- it's dead by that point. Yeah, it's very slow. It's methodical. It's very like I said. I think this currently under. Ten Hag, I think if you were to combine the way United played on a Moyes with how they played on a Van Hal, I think it's a mixture of both. I think it's yeah. a mixture, just a, and that's not that's not a good thing either. But we'll we'll have to yeah. just see, wait and see. But I think right now that Ten Hag's been given everything, and that's the I think that's what a lot of people, especially the media, I think that's why they have their knives out for him because he was he was told. You no, know, when he first, I don't have the players that, that no, the, that one that need. I don't have the players that need to, that will play the what, way I want them to play. Yeah. So okay, let's go ahead and get you your players. Like you went after Frankie De Jong his first yep. summer and he didn't get him. Okay, so and I noticed United never actually went out and got a player similar to Frankie De Jong. There was no like plan B for that. So yeah, uh, they went out. They didn't get Frankie De Jong, and then he was like, okay, and he starts going out and signing some of his players. A lot of them former Ajax players. He went and got Martinez, Antne, Onana, yep. Delit, Mazraoui, and then so he has players that have played with him in the past, and it's still not working. So okay, that's that's strike number one from. So yep. all the media is out saying, okay, mm-hmm. didn't have players to play the way I want to play. Okay, he's got the players, so that's strike one. And the, and the second one is like, well, uh, the, the they need to stick to the plan. And then, like, okay, everyone can see, even Stevie Wonder can see it right now, that United don't have a plan. United yeah, don't have there a isn't plan. one. They're, they don't seem to have a plan when they're going forward. And this whole, the players need time and all this kind of stuff. Okay, I'm not seeing it. So that's strike, that media is immediate. Like, everybody yeah. can see United don't, there's just no, there's yeah. no coordination. There's nothing nope. between it. There's, there's no gel between the team like i don't even know if even these players even get along outside like, i don't do they get along outside because they don't outside the, the pitch because they don't look like they like being on the same pitch as one another they seem to just very disjointed they don't there's not yeah really yeah much yeah of a, com, there's not much camaraderie camaraderie I remember yeah the one thing i remember noticing uh when ten hag first came on board was the players were very big into 
celebrating each other. Like if a player made a good block during a, a shot or put away for a corner, you see them all going over high five one another, help yep, each other, yep. like really getting mm-hmm. on top one another, make, keeping that morale high. Yeah. Now when you see a player block a shot, it's like, oh, no. like no, you just yeah, like, oh, here we go again. Uh, here we go again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no high tempo. There's no high. Like, there's the, per- the high personalities are going around like high five and grabbing people up, really encouraging one another. Yeah. There's none of that. It's a lot of just like. Just eye rolling, like blowing, like just. All right, yeah, it's, um, yeah, like you just said. Here we go again. Yeah, just going through the motions, and that's yeah, the last thing yeah. you want to hear. It's the last thing you want to see, and then the last thing is like you know, I heard that Ten Hag was a little bit. No, he wasn't exactly a hundred percent, which I thought was strange. It, it wasn't exactly a hundred percent convinced that his backroom staff, like his staff, his coaching staff, were were, were uh, equipped to take him forward to really get him into where he needs to be. So I thought that was strange because he worked with Steve McLaren at uh, AZ Alkmaar. And, yeah. And, and and I think it was maybe even FC20. So it was FC20. That's when he was at, he was at, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. FC20, AZ Alkmaar, FC20 under Steve McLaren. That's why he brought McLaren back to him because it was a win-win for him. He knew him from yeah. his FC20 days. FC20, and yep. FC McLaren knew United from being assistant manager to Ferguson. Um, so he brought him back. Now he's got rid of him. He's taken over the Jamaica job. Ben, he brought Benny McCarthy in. Ben McCarthy was one of the first to leave. Uh, uh, Mitchell Van de Ag, he br- yep. brought him in. He's gone. He was his number two. He's yep. gone. I don't even know where he is now. And then he's brought in a whole goalkeeper, new goalkeeper coach. Yeah, goal- new, yep. new, new medical teams, team. P- yeah, medical team. Uh, new- Everything. This, yeah, so, it's all brand new. Yeah, they brought in O'Driscoll last year, last September yep. from Arsenal uh, and his whole medical team. So he, he was given a, a pretty much blank canvas of thinking, okay, you've been given you no. Know, the players, like if any of us really did that three pronged process of finding players, then, um, and Ten Hag was the one that chose him, then that's on him. Uh, he's, he's done everything, and that, and that's strike three for the media. They're yeah. like, okay, he's been given everything to succeed. Yeah. He's been given, he's been pretty much given keys to the castle, and he doesn't seem to understand what he wants to do with them. And now at this point, you know, you're just under siege on every single match. They're just getting absolutely bombarded with shots. They're giving up goals. There's, you just see that the players are demoralized. You look over at the manager. The manager looks demoralized. He looks yeah. dejected. He looks just like a, sh- a shell of the man yeah. he was when he first joined. Yeah. Which seems to happen. That happens almost every manager at the club. Like any, no, the play, the managers come in and they don't. If they don't succeed, it seems like maybe it's the pressure of managing Man United just gets to them. Yeah, but they just I, I, they, it, it very well could be. But at, at the same time. They all they know what the, they know what they're getting themselves into before signing that contract. They know that this is Manchester United. They're, they, everyone knows who they are. So I don't. I never understood where you hear you see media people saying, "Oh, well, I don't think they understood the, 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 what, what the reality." Everybody understands what the reality of man, managing Manchester United is. Of course, everyone understands that there's the, the there's literally three big massive words when you walk onto Old Trafford pitch in the dugout the three with fishies you it says Sir Alex Ferguson so yeah. like, you're in you're in that man's shadow then that yeah, man exactly. literally was a giant at the club so like everyone has to understand I hear people turn around and say well you need to move on from the past you can't you can't you have to the past is what laid the foundations and if yeah you start, exactly if you, if you forget what laid the foundations then you won't be able to know what to build on so yeah, you can't exactly. turn, you can't just turn around and say, "Oh, just forget about the past and move forward." Like, you no, know, you can continue to move forward, but you have to still re- remain and understand that the foundation. So, this new stadium that they're talking about building, one, I don't know where they're going to get the money from, unless they're just going to use outsider investors to, you know, to do to, it, to yeah, much, to, to pump the money into, like, yeah. give them money back, or or because they're not going to get it on the football pitch, they're not going to, they're not going to get it from no, absolutely the not League, winning the Premier no. League. Right? They're not going to give them that. Nope. I've seen, uh, no, the CEO, the new CEO, Omar came out and said, uh, Omar Brada came out and said, oh, we have, a, we have it on the calendar. 2028 is when we expect United to start, to start competing yeah, for the Premier League. I, again. I, yeah, I, I saw that again. I was like, uh, wait a minute. You're telling me I, you want me to wait four years? <laughs> yeah. And I joked that, I joked in our group chat after during the Spurs match. I was like, Omar has currently updating his, his statement to 2030. Yeah. 2030. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Every time you need it, every, every, for every three, three nil match, you know, yeah, it, go, it, go, it, it adds two years. Yeah, exactly. Onto, onto that. So, yeah. At <laughs> uh, this point, we'll just, we'll have to just wait and see what's going to happen. But it's, I think it's the point where 
I don't think United's fans are going to turn on the on the club in terms of not showing up. I don't think the United fans no. are like that. I, I don't no. No, do I like watching United play? No, but does that mean I'm not going to tune in to watch them? A hundred percent. I will still, unfortunately, put myself through tries and tribulations of watching United and hope that we see the players give a shit. But um, it's right now. It's definitely not. It's looking very, very bleak. Yeah. No. I mean, and that's probably a a good place to wrap it up. I'm I'm just going to label this es- episode the the vent session. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah I mean yeah that's a that's a good place to tie it up I mean yeah uh, you know I don't know what to expect going into the Porto match I fully expect us to lose I mean quit briefly before we sign off D what what's your score prediction for that one well, I got the Spurs one spot on um, yeah yeah I had, I, I had three I even had, I had three nil at Son Madison and Solanke to score obviously Son didn't play thank Christ because it would have been worse but Solanke did score. Um, I'm, I, I can't see United getting another I can't see United scoring but at the same time Porto did lose away uh, in their first match in the Europa League yeah. 3-2 yeah. to uh, it was a Boda or whatever that yeah but that. yeah yeah I can't remember the so name lost of it so Porto Porto yeah. do league goals um, no maybe I would say I was going to say maybe this is a tournament the United could really like, show expand their football and playing in Europe. But at the same time, we just watched them against C twenty and they were awful. <laughs> I think it's going to be another draw. I think it could be another like one each draw, one, or, one each, two, two, two. two, one one two two kind of thing. And I think the two two will come from like maybe a set piece or something. But um, yeah, it's just it's one of those things where it's hard to really say because I don't even know who's going to play like at this point. That's like, a yeah. When that's I say about- who's going to play like who's going to actually like who's going to start and who's actually going to actually give a shit. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a valid, those are all valid points. It, I'll say, I, I tend to agree with you that it'll probably be a draw too. I'll say a one, one each. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, I, that, you know, I, you know, I don't expect us to come out of there with a, with a win at all. Um, all right. Well, D give your, give your social a plug real quick before we sign off. Yeah, it's good old DC dot McGuigan on the ground. And I am at KeithIp86. And again, uh, thanks for listening to us, guys. And uh, Wooly will definitely have an episode out next week. And hopefully Eric Ten Hag, uh, <laughs> who knows? I was going to say hopefully he's still the manager, but I also am going to say hopefully he's not. So who the hell knows? We'll talk uh-huh. to you.